Good afternoon and welcome to Working For You. I am Les Roy Williams. Thank you very much for joining us for today's program. We do apologize for the late start. Today we will be having a discussion on robotics. Who would have thought that here in St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, an island, uh, a country of just 104 square miles, that we will be having this discussion in terms of robotics. We are small, but we are very big indeed. Today I have with me members of the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association, SKNRA. An association has been formed coming out of what has been happening in St. Kitts and Nevis with respect to our involvement, our excellence on the world stage with respect to robotics. And this association has been formed, of course, to further the interests of robotics here in the Federation and to offer opportunities, especially to our young people. Today I have with me three members of the SKNRA. I would invite them to introduce themselves and to tell me something about who they are, starting with my immediate right. My name is Shaki Benjamin. I am the executive director of the SKNRA. Um, being a part of SKNRA, it has, it has proven to me that this is something that is well needed for our country for the development of IT. Um, me, myself, being a member, has, has also grown as an individual um, on a professional scale. And, um, it has allowed me to perform much better in my personal workspace, being um, a systems officer at the Caribbean Credit Card Corporation. So, yeah. Oh, my name is Sanjeev Suresh, and I am a team member of the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association, and I am the team captain for the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics team for 2020. And my part of the association as a member has actually been much loved because I feel like everyone in the association acts as a family. And this also helps with the robotics team as well as we come up with new ideas and challenges for every uh, real life situation or so problem that we might have, a solution for each. So it's a great start. My name is Dr. Ricardo Neal and I'm the founder of the St. Kitts Nevis Robotics Association. I'm also the mentor for the team over the past few years. And as the public knows, we have been competing on the world stage from 2017, representing in Washington, D.C., uh, Mexico, Dubai, and we have been a contender on the international scale. So we are pleased to be here. Um, to, to ensure the country is aware as to what is happening and the evolution that is happening even right now. Thank you to all three of you. Now, let us start with robotics for <coughs> dummies. For example, I'm a dummy. What is robotics? What does it involve? <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> I'm glad to ask that question because we sat here and we we said that that might be the very first question. What is robotics? And um, robotics is actually, well, a robot first is a mechanical device. And this mechanical device can be controlled using different languages. Um, when we say languages, we're talking about not English, not Spanish, French. We're talking about languages that is used to write codes. So for example, in the high schools, they use what is called Pascal as a language for their SBAs. For robotics, we use language such as Java, 
C++, Python, Perl, and I do not want to get anyone confused any further, but there's a number of languages that we use to code these devices. Now, these devices are beneficial in different aspects. Let's say, for example, we have um, a situation where there's a fire, and we can build a robot. That robot can go in, you know, get rid of the flames, come out, no one is hurt, and, you know, and everything is good so far. So robot in itself is just a mechanical device controlled using code. Now, the term... So the long and short of it mm -hmm. is that the goal of robotics mm -hmm. is, is really to design intelligent mm -hmm. machines yes. that are able to assist human beings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that happening right across the, the European Union. Um, a number of initiatives would have gone in place to ensure that um, that particular kind of mechanical device is fully functional within the, the um, society. As a matter of fact, we have had... Um, in Europe, um, industries, which are robotic industries. Now, China is one of the leading countries in, in that aspect. Um, China has gone as far as putting robots in, in the hotel industry. And so we feel that not because we are small, we can't engage in that kind of um, um, facility. Uh, we have proven that we are one of the top in the world right, right now, and so we want to expand further. Right, so, so robots, in a sense, Mm -hmm. substitute for humans and they mm -hmm. can replicate so to speak uh, human action yes but you know automation and so on and you speak about you mm -hmm. know certain industries mm -hmm. that are very automated in terms of the use of robots mm -hmm. and of course that has its advantage mm -hmm. because they can do perhaps better work and um, more yeah. accurate work and yes. it's not so labor intensive, but at the mm -hmm. very same time, mm -hmm. Dr. Neil, mm -hmm. um, you know, if we are going to have <laughs> robots replacing mm -hmm. humans, what is going to happen in terms of work so I, and I people <laughs> earning, earning so, money? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I knew you were going to come back with that question, uh, which is a reality, and that's a reality. Robot tends to um, take certain precedence, if I may will, and um, robot will go 24 hours, you know, mm -hmm. constantly. And um, it doesn't take a break and so forth. But um, what we're looking at is a side-by-side -side cooperation between um, human and machine. That's mm -hmm. what we're looking at. Um, we do have in industries what we call retraining. And so if, we have a, if there's an employee who used to do a particular task, um, that employee would be retrained to then attend to different aspects within that um, organization. So. Um, we are, we are not um, promoting the replacement of human <laughs> robots with robots at all. Um, but we are saying that it can be safer. It can do some tasks that is safer um, for humans. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, people getting involved in robotics have to have a certain background, mm -hmm. have to have a certain knowledge. I know that today and in the world and so on in terms of development, in terms of the use of technology and all of that, we're speaking about, first they began by saying a STEM education, right. which is science, technology, engineering and math. Mm -hmm. But of course, somebody recognized that something is missing mm -hmm. and so they put an A inside there which is arts, because that is extremely important as well. And so instead of STEM, they are now saying STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Now, what are some of the disciplines really? Because I, I suspect that robotics is an interdisciplinary research area. So what would be some of the disciplines that would actually go into robotics? I know it has to do with engineering and so on, but and what so would be some yeah. of them? Well, you see, um, uh, yes. Rash uh, oh, Shaki. Uh, Shaki, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, as you mentioned, yeah, the STEAM. Um, though though um, robotics, the main goal is to, I guess, develop and design and produce. Um, what we're also trying to do is incorporate um, some skill-based training so individuals can know not just have an understanding of robotics itself but the various areas and aspects that they feel comfortable working in. So if I'm more into engineering, let's use that for example, 
um, I'm going to now get an understanding and a better grasp, 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 sorry, grasp, sorry, on the, the way you should go about tackling a project with the engineering look at it. And then you also not just have an engineering understanding, but you get bits and pieces out of the science and how these different areas correlate with each other to then come together and form one unique project. Right, so, so you, br you bring a number of engineering dis disciplines, for example, of course, you know, because you're dealing with robots, of course, you're dealing with the mechanical aspects of, as well. So you have mechanical engineering, and then you're dealing, of course, with the whole thing of um, the computer. So you would have computer engineering, and, and, and you're still dealing with an electrical component. I would assume, so that would require electrical engineering. And you're dealing with, you teach uh, Dr. Neil information technology. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so you have different disciplines coming out, even in the science area. So once I have knowledge of um, the anatomy, you know, um, that fits me into that particular um, area. Uh, because most of the robots that are designed across the world, they are designed based on human behavior. So which means in order for me to design something like human behavior, um, I must understand that particular um, discipline to actually um, get involved. Mm -hmm. you know? So um, STEM, and, and if, if I may, I could pivot a bit more on STEM. So First Global, um, that we travel to every single year, they are more focusing on STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Now, we here um, in St. Kitts and Nevis, we are focusing on STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. Why? Because we feel that we do have personnel who, who, are in, who, who are involved in the design process. And that design process is going to bring out arts. All right? And that arts component, we wanted to fit that in because we are creative people. You know, we are. We're, we're born creative. <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are creative people. And so we want to make sure we capture that part. Now, um, we actually checked um, the first global site and we see them now championing the cause of STEAM. So they're now looking in that area, given that um, because of COVID, there has been a change. And so our operation now is online. And then we, we find that the participants are becoming creative in the tasks that they're asked for. So we find more persons are leaning towards STEAM to capture that particular discipline arts. Right, mm -hmm. now in St. Kitts and Nevis, really, we do not have mm -hmm. um, so many industries to speak mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. We've had the sugar industry, which used, of course, very little um, automation. You know, um, you had the tractors and, and you had the locomotives and, and that sort of thing, but it was, it was, it was more labor intensive rather than capital intensive. Mm -hmm. And later on, of course, when locals did not want to cut mm -hmm. the sugar cane because they thought it was you know, something of the past mm -hmm. for them, um, we had to bring in people from Guyana and St. Vincent and other places to cut the cane. And then the thought of having mechanical cane ha um, harvesters you know, and yeah, all of that do. sort of a thing. But Sanjay. St. Kitts and Nevis, you know, we don't have so many automated industries or industries on a whole. What benefits really can the whole area of robotics bring to a small island country, St. Kitts and Nevis, Federation? What can robotics, how can robotics benefit us? Robotics can also to be precise, we could help uh, small industries, like for example, we could use Sun Island or we could use some of the medical. So we could, we have a project going on recently, which is called Prosthesis, which is a replacement for body parts. It's more like a prosthetic. And these are mechanical or automated. So it'll actually help the victims of uh, amputations and so on much more. So not only would it actually show us out there, it'll actually um, show that St. Kitts and Nevis is starting something that not most countries, the bigger countries actually have yet.
-hmm. So as a small federation of Think It's a Nevis, as the association, if we start something now, we can actually make that a bigger project that other countries would want to get from us. Right. Sure, go, go ahead. If you look on St. Kitts and Nevis, we do have industries here, and we do have, we have industrial site, um, and a number of the operations at industrial site, they are labor intensive. And um, once, if, you know, once we're able to refine a particular product, that product can be implemented in different um, pr um, private sector and even government sector organizations. And that would open a new avenue for investments within, within St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. now, if I am sitting outside and I'm looking in and I real and I'm looking and I realize I think it's an Evis do have a robotics sector, I am going to lean more towards to invest in <laughs> because you know it, it shows that we're thinking beyond. All right? And so, you know, the benefit of having robotics here in St. Kitts is transforming different sectors, um, developing a brand new industry, and that industry will actually garnered attention from different um, eras across the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, St. Kitts and Nevis mm -hmm. is on the move in mm -hmm. terms of information technology. Just a few mm -hmm. years ago, oh, yes. we won some awards, of course, and you know, for being the most improved mm -hmm. um, and so on country in terms of information technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that award ceremony was held somewhere in Botswana yeah. over in Africa. Mm -hmm. So given that atmosphere and that drive that we now have in terms of information technology, that seems to be fertile mm -hmm. um, right. ground for the growing of mm -hmm. this robotics. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah it's, it's, it's the right time. Um, because as you mentioned, interdisciplinary earlier, um, in order for a robot to be a robot, it is actually a computer device, except now I am able to um, control it via a device. Um, the, on the global scale, I think, I, I think our, our present position in the world should actually move up, <laughs> um, yes. given, 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 given what we're doing. Because this is a leap forward, not just a step, this is a leap forward. Um, when we look at it, we are, the, we are the only robotics association within the Caribbean region. There's no other association in the Caribbean region mm -hmm. that is looking like that. So we are stepping ahead. And that's because we see what the future is. Mm -hmm. and we understand the future is change. And the future is leaning on technology. And robotics intertwines within the technological field. Yes. And that's why STEM and STEAM is very important to us here in St. Kitts and Nevis at the moment. Right. In mm -hmm. fact, we, in Botswana, we won mm -hmm. the world's most improved and the most mm -hmm. dynamic information um, development Index, the IDI Awards at the symposium in Botswana. Now that mm -hmm. was in 2016 mm -hmm. and, and that's quite um, that's a an, an achievement. Now, mm -hmm. the initial stages of getting into robotics and so on, mm -hmm. if you can give us, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Neil, mm -hmm. some background or some history mm -hmm. Because I know it had its genesis, oh, yes. of course, at mm -hmm. the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. students, of mm -hmm. course, who would have, been would have been under your tutelage. Yes. Um, we started robotics around 2016. I think we spoke about this recently, around 2016. And the start of the robotics was just a, a, a conversation. And we were throwing out ideas. And one of the gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen who initiated that conversation is right here, uh, Mr. Douglas. Um, Shaki Benjamin, <laughs> Shaki Benjamin, initiated the, the, the whole conversation of robotics, and it started from there. And from the discussion, we move into looking at um, how can we begin to match with the other countries that is involved in this area. We begin to look on competitions. We begin to look on designs. We begin to look on those those different aspects, and then we further on move on to the competition stage. And that competition stage happened in 2017, the first time St. Kitts and Nevis is represented on that stage um, in Washington, D.C., and which was also the first global robotics Olympics. So we, so we had a point to make at that point in time. Right? So it started from that and moved into that area. Um, and to further look on your question, the, 
the whole idea of making robotics what it is, we have to initiate that conversation also in the lower school stages. We have to look on primary schools, high schools, and get them involved. And that is where, why the association is actually um, here. Okay, mm -hmm. so coming out of all of that, that mm -hmm. background and so on, and given the fact that St. Kitts, mm -hmm. you said that we have participated in competitions oh, yes. mm -hmm. on the international stage, mm -hmm. and we have done much better than countries that are even yeah. more technologically advanced than yes. we are. But um, at the very same time, <laughs> being technologically advanced mm -hmm. than we are mm -hmm. does not mean mm -hmm. that probably you're more capable mm -hmm. or that you're more, uh, or that you're, you're more prone mm -hmm. to learning than us. Yeah. You know, in that right. field. And so we yeah. have the capability mm -hmm. and all of that mm -hmm. to excel in that field, even though we are not as technologically advanced mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. some of those countries, those mm -hmm. Asian countries and, right. you know, the developed countries mm -hmm. and so on. So coming out of that, mm -hmm. really, you know, the need for the SKNRA, yeah. the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association. Mm -hmm. Now, what is it? Who are the members? Mm -hmm. What are mm -hmm. its objectives? Mm -hmm. We would have broached on some of them before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chucky. Okay, so um, <laughs> yes, the SKNRA, um, we are a non-profit, non-government organization. Non-profit. Um, the association, as it has been mentioned, was recently formed. So we were founded by Dr. Neil in January 2020 mm -hmm. this year, and we became a legal entity in March of this year. Um, the association, um, it was created under the fact that we, we are a country participating in the first Global Robotics Challenge, but this is not all we want to be remembered for. So we, we have now formed a team of young people past CFBC students and other individuals around um, the, uh, the island and some being overseas as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we stretch as far as um, Belgium. We have a member from Sakets that is in Belgium that has reached mm -hmm. out to us and is now a member. Um, so the association is not just catered for individuals with an interest in robotics. So as we mentioned before, we focus on STEAM. So that is to bring individuals from around the country that have any preference area under STEAM and allow them to network, come up with ideas, and not feel like they, they don't have anything they can offer. So in this, because we are the first robotics association within the Caribbean, we are making the step to put Sakits on the map for something else. Because we know we did it already when Mr. Collins ran and he put us there and people know who we are. So now we are showing them even though we're small, we can come out on top and prove who St. Kitts and Nevis really is. Right, so you basically have created history Correct. in terms of forming this St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association, which is going to go down in history, of course, as not only being the first, mm -hmm. as you said, in St. Kitts and Nevis, mm -hmm. but being the first in the... <laughs> In the OECS. In, in, in the OECS. Yes. yes. So, you know, I, I have to, I must say that um, this is something that, that should be applaud, applauded. Um, and the reason why is that we started in 2017, just a team. And when we started, it was just four of us who went to Washington, D.C. We went there. Um, we surprised the world. We came back first in the OECS, second in the Caribbean, I think 36 in the world out of 200 countries. Um, 2018, we went back again. The numbers increased. I think it was about eight of us. So the numbers keep on increasing. Because the, 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 the whole idea was, instead of just keeping it to a small group, we expand it to include students or participants who want to be a part of this thing. Um, in order for us to change a nation, we have to get the young people transformed. Mm -hmm. And so we felt that including the more, the more young people, it would be better to transform it and to lay that foundation. So even after I am gone and you know, we are gone, that foundation is left, that St. Kitts and Nevis entered the realm of robotics. Right? And 2019, we went to Dubai. And Dubai is where we got a number of awards in Dubai. 
Uh, we got engineering awards. I'm sure Sanjeev wanna probably yeah. step on that. <laughs> so in yeah. 2019, we actually got two engineering awards. Mm -hmm. We won STEM awards. We all won award certificates, and also we won the medal for first in the OECS and second the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so all of that um, laid a foundation where the younger one looking on, and even us as the older ones looking on, saying, "I'm proud that Saint Kitts was in Dubai, you know, represent represent the country and did extremely well." So, coming back home, we decided why not ensure that everyone is included and inclusion, all institutions included. And therefore, the association would have been born out of that. Um, I must say that we are extremely proud of it, um, that we have an association now where we can respond to different needs within the community. Right, so you're a mm -hmm. non-profit, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the, the everyday needs and costs mm -hmm. and so on of the association, how is that funded? How, how, how? How, how do you fund the association? Yes, so, yeah, at, at this present moment, mm -hmm. we are seeking donations and sponsorships. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, as we, as we make the various connections and speak with different individuals to come on board with the association, we are taking our own initiative mm -hmm. to have our own fundraisers, mm -hmm. to raise funds to aid our projects and mandates that we have mm -hmm. a part of our portfolio as the SKNRA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, no, what kind of drive? Maybe, maybe you can tell me, Sanjay, mm -hmm. do you have in terms of trying to attract, because I know you said, of course, one of your goals mm -hmm. is to attract more mm -hmm. people into the association. So what plans do you have? How will you go about it? What means you have to achieve that end of attracting more people and more young people mm -hmm. um, into the association? So, well, in the association right now, like uh, Shaq said, we have a couple of projects. And these mm -hmm. projects are not only to attract like, the older folks, we are also uh, mainly you think to the younger mm -hmm. youths. Because mm -hmm. robotics needs to start early, and mm -hmm. it will not only f uh, help the association, it will help them uh, personally as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of projects that we are working on called RASP, the Robotics After School Program. You have the St. Kitts and Nevis National Robotics Challenge, and a couple more projects like Lego League and so on that we're working on, which should be hopefully, hopefully. coming soon. <laughs> so yes. all yeah. of these projects will actually not only help the uh, association and the youths, it'll also um, show out uh, SKNRA mm -hmm. and the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis to the entire Caribbean and the world as well. Right, mm -hmm. okay. Good, yeah. now, um, once somebody joins the association, what can they expect? <laughs> Revolution. <laughs> um, it, once someone joins, um, they expect to be a part of training workshops. So we'll be having a number of workshops to ensure that members benefit from what robotics is. So it's not just to prepare them to be a part of external events, but also um, workshops. So we have workshops com coming up, coding workshops. We have um, talks com coming up. Um, we have a, a number of initiatives. We have our after-school robotics program coming up, where we hope to ensure that that is implemented within um, different sectors across in Kitsa and Nevis. Um, I get a lot of calls. Um, from Nevi saying, when are you guys coming? Uh, my, my word is, we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. Um, but once you're a part of the SKNRA, you will be a part of several training sessions. So we want to ensure that you are highly trained. Um, we have plans to work on what we call our international um, relational area, where we will be also seeking scholarships for those persons who are in the association. Why that is important? I feel that that is important because if we have young people who are competing with countries across the world and we are outperforming them, I think it's only fair for us to give them scholarships, <laughs> right? And encourage them to mm -hmm. pursue areas within the um, engineering field. So that's one of our um, plan that is on the table. So members will be exposed to those things. Um, in terms of 
getting, and not only scholarships for, um, and when I say scholarship, I'm not talking about just for CFPC, I'm talking about international scholarships um, to make sure persons are benefiting from, from it. And given that we have members overseas, and it's only drive the point home even much, much more. Right. Now, mm -hmm. now in turn, I know that you designed and, and you mm -hmm. built a robot, or yeah. you've built more than one well, robot. Several, yeah. Is, isn't that so, Sanjay? <laughs> yes. Do these robots have names? And <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, do. They, do. they do have names. They do have names. <laughs> they actually have names, like, like human beings. And yeah. could, could you tell me something about these robots mm -hmm. that were designed and yes. constructed, of course, yeah. Um, yeah. Here in St. Kitts and Nevis, yeah. what, 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 what are some of the things that they could do? Mm -hmm. For example, and um, I do know, mm -hmm. and what type of robots are they? Because right. I know type. that you have mm -hmm. different types of robots, mm -hmm. isn't that correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. so you, you can. So we have the first global robots starting off. And so like we said, we have been participating for four years as of this year. So in 2017, we had our small robot, the first one, called Marley. His purpose was to collect contaminants. So the goal was to collect contaminants and drop it off at the contaminant center. So it'll, it'll take in the contaminants and drop it off. That was the purpose. So the second one, 2018, in Mexico City, we had Gambino. His purpose was to collect energy blocks and transfer to con conservation centers. And 2018, 19 in Dubai, we had Raptor, the mean boy, because he was able to collect <laughs> two different sizes of contaminants, the bigger ones and smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And the whole purpose for all of these bots was to solve real life problems. Mm -hmm. And this year, because of pa the pandemic and COVID, we were not able to go anywhere. So we have multiple smaller bots. We have Slingshot, we have the Motobot, and we have a couple of others coming up soon, which I cannot give out now. Mm. So those are for it's future. It's a secret. <laughs> yes. So those are ongoing projects. Mm -hmm. now, now, you know, you have different types of robots. Now, these robots that you, you built, what type of robots? Because from my, my research, and so you have, you have pre-programmed robots. Mm -hmm. You have humanoid mm -hmm. um, robots. Um, and so on. What, what mm -hmm. kind of robots were these? <laughs> we actually work on all, to be honest. <laughs> we have the humanoid project, drones, yeah. underwater drones. The we have. So we, yeah, we're right across the board. <laughs> we so try to cover everything. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the ones for the challenge, they're more of what we call a push bot, um, where you have you've designed it in such a way that you have a controller that is connected to your tablet and that tablet controls the, the robot. Mm -hmm. So those ones are push bot. The other ones now would be the automotive ones, which is the arm as Sanjeev mm -hmm. suggests earlier. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. who does all the programming and all of that <laughs> of the robots? Uh, we do. Uh, <laughs> we do. Because I think I just might need a robot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you help me do some housework? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, one of the fortunate thing here, and I think sometimes, and I think sometimes we underestimate our potential here in Saint Kitts and Nevis. We do underestimate the potential. I don't think we know how brilliant and how skilled we are at something. And the participants who participate in the global challenge, they they understand how talented they are when they realize that they are beating um, some of the Asian countries. Um, they realize, oh, oh, so, so, so I got this. And that boosts, boosts, boosts their, their confidence level. But um, we do have persons in St. Kitts like um, Xavier Shaw, um, mm -hmm. who is one of the member. At, uh, he's, the, he's the vice chair for the association. Um, he's heavily in coding. I myself do a, do a lot of coding. Can't do it as much as I used to. <laughs> We're heavily in coding. And you, know, you have Sanjeev and most of the members. Because we try to get everyone who is a part of the challenge to be exposed to different aspects. So for example, if one is working on a particular aspect of the robot and somebody has to go somewhere, we can still carry on the task because the, the, and the skill set would spread right, right across the board. Right. Mm -hmm. Good. Now if somebody wants to join the association, what, what is the, the, the procedure? Um, to, to become a member of the association, it's a simple process of just going to our website, which is sknra.org, and you will see 
um, uh, uh, option in the task menu that says take action. And below there you will see the various ways you can become a member. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also recommend a friend. So mm -hmm. you would send off your information, it comes back to us, we do our um, interviews and investigations and then we go about from there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the borders are closed and I think mm -hmm. you, Sanjay, had mentioned that you were supposed to travel mm -hmm. and to go to an international um, yeah. competition. Could, could you remind us again what, what that is? The mm -hmm. So the competition is First Global. And First Global is an organization that organizes annual competition or the Robotics Olympics, which its main purpose is to ignite a passion into youth like myself mm -hmm. um, into the field of STEM, mm -hmm. or as we call it, STEAM. Yes. And each year we travel and we have a uh, particular challenge that we're going to be solving. And First Global likes to solve like actual real life problems like world hunger, um, mm -hmm. Uh, water pollution, air pollution, and a couple of other really common issues that are not yet solved. So the challenge itself now, you can see that there is multiple ways to solve one child, one problem. Mm -hmm. So this year, because we are not able to go out, it is not stopping us. As a team of 30 members this year, 18 team members, two uh, coaches, our mentors, mm -hmm. and uh, eight, 10 supporting mentors, we are not stopping. We are actually driving harder than ever this year. And each challenge just gets better. Because what we do is we don't try to compete. We actually try to have fun. And when we have fun, everything just comes out even more better than what we expected. So when we have expectations somewhere for a challenge, for example, one of our challenges was, was what's cooking. We were supposed to cook a dish from, uh, that we would like. And we expected to create something, but the end product was much better because the entire time we had fun. We made jokes, we played around, we mm -hmm. discussed some things, and it just had fun. Mm -hmm. So because we had fun, even First Global themselves, they liked it and they said it was creatively done. Mm -hmm. So each challenge that we do is just getting better and better, and hopefully soon, we should be number one. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I must add, I must add that, um, we are actually at a place where we are moving away from even our status anymore, you know, um, to say that we are number one. Um, you know, but I know Sanji and the others like that. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but from my from my perspective, you know, we are looking on more of what can we do now in Saint Kitts and Nevis. How can we get the young people involved? How can we get them in um, robotics, preparing them for the next phase, for the next step? Um, how can we let them leave St. Kitts and Nevis, go into a university and see um, robotics and just fit in very easily, right? So that's the phase that, that, that um, we, we're at now. We're stepping forward. I, I suppose if we could have, you know, built a few robots mm -hmm. to get rid of COVID-19, <laughs> wouldn't that have been such a great idea? Agree, but, yeah. but nonetheless, uh, science comes into play. Now yes. you hear that they're developing apps and so on mm -hmm. to be able to... Um, help with mm -hmm. contact tracing yes. and all of that sort of a thing. But in terms of your work, because you're in such a, a delicate field and mm -hmm. of course you know you are dealing with um, patents and yes. all of that sort mm -hmm. of a thing. Mm -hmm. Now that leads me to the question mm -hmm. in terms of how do you protect that? Mm -hmm. Because I mean with any sort of a creative work um, that people do, Fiction, whether it is yeah. to write a song or to, to write a poem mm -hmm. or something like that, mm -hmm. your work must be protected from others who, of course, would probably want to steal your ideas and to steal your patents mm -hmm. and, and, and that sort of a thing. So mm -hmm. how are you going about protecting that mm -hmm. in terms of intellectual property? Mm -hmm. I know that we have an intellectual property office here that mm -hmm. is, of mm -hmm. course, um, run by um, Jehan Williams, mm -hmm. who is the director of that, 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 mm -hmm. that, office. that office. How are you registering your work mm -hmm. to ensure that it is my work, mm -hmm. it is my creative work, and so therefore I have the copyright, the trademark mm -hmm. to it? 
As a matter of fact, um, we actually we are sh we are scheduled to have a meeting with um, a few um, lawyers. Um, one one in particular who will be coming back to St. Kitts, um, who was trained in that area, and so we are looking to have a discussion where our work is concerned. Um, because as simple as the works may seem, um, <laughs> persons can take small bits and pieces and make something and make billions from it. And so we feel that that is a crucial aspect. And so we are, ha we, we are currently having a discussion. Um, I believe one of the lawyers should return in September, if my memory serves me right. And so we will be looking at securing our work. Right. N now, one of the things you mentioned earlier um, in our discussion is how you can get into the schools mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> introduce the whole idea of robotics in the schools. Now, mm -hmm. what, what plans do you have for that? I think one of our plans... Because if children mm -hmm. can be exposed, yeah. young people can be exposed at a younger age, they don't mm -hmm. have to wait until, of course, they reach the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so, 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 so that is where um, the after-school robotics program comes in. Because <clears throat> we want to make sure that students are exposed to it. Um, we have an outstanding meeting with the minister, and so as soon as that meeting um, comes, we'll be discussing um, the way forward as how we can get the younger generation involved in this area. Um, the whole concept of having robotics um, exposed or expanding St. Kitts and Nevis is a is, is a concept that is embraced by a number of, of um, ministers within St. Kitts and Nevis. So we're looking forward to have the conversation to finalize um, how do we go about you know, and what stage do we start from. In the association though, we are working on curriculum. Uh, we're working on documentation that is going to fit well uh, within our after school robotics program because a curriculum is going to be very vital for that process and a curriculum that includes you know coding that includes um, tasks that focuses on engineering and science um, one of the conversation that we were having recently is to see if we can bring what is called engineering for kids within St. Kitts and Nevis and that is actually um, an organization that provides engineering skills for young kids as, as young as four um, so we're looking at those aspects as something that is vital yeah, mm -hmm. in this age, of course, where we are dealing with young people, just mm -hmm. recently we had uh, International Youth Skills Day. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the focus is on young people not only acquiring skills, mm -hmm. but in terms mm -hmm. of young people acquiring work. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so therefore, this area, of course, that you are discussing mm -hmm. is one such means in which people can find employment. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And preparing people, mm -hmm. not just for St. Kitts and Nevis, mm -hmm. but rather for a sort of a global future. Yeah. yeah. Now, what about, even at the college, mm -hmm. in the technical and vocational um, part of the college, you know, coming up with a course such as robotics engineering mm -hmm. <laughs> and putting that into the mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. You know, so students who want to attend the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College and the technical wing mm -hmm. of the college mm -hmm. can enroll in that course, robotics mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. I know that you do yeah. um, information technology, mm -hmm. you know, and I do know that you do mechanical engineering, engineering and yeah. so that is there, mm -hmm. um, computer, mm -hmm. you know, and all those things. So you'll have a course specific to that, mm -hmm. and then you have the prerequisites, of mm -hmm. course, of people who are involved in mm -hmm. some of these other things to be a part of that course. Yeah, um, in terms of CFPC, um, that's something that we'd have to initiate <laughs> with CFPC to see if that's something possible. But for the association itself, within the association, um, we are 70 plus members strong and so um, our responsibility is to ensure that we design a base that fits them very well and then spur into the, mm. the, the um, community. So um, the whole idea of having courses and that would be an excellent thing um, to have engineering courses and so forth that students can fit, fit into. But 
even before that becomes a reality. We want, under the association, to make sure we have those drafted curriculums, we are using them with our members, and then affecting different aspects within society. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is, sometimes we try to respond to problems via, you know, uh, saying, you know, this organization must do this and must do that. You know, and sometimes you find that there, it takes a bit more time. And so, for, for us, SKNRA, we feel that we can respond to some of these um, 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 situations by allowing young people to be a part of you know, engineering at an early stage, early stage, even as young as four. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. suppose that there's a lot of impetus mm -hmm. to continue, and, and mm -hmm. see the, the association is mm -hmm. growing. Yeah. And I suppose coming out of your first global mm -hmm. and robotics challenge, mm -hmm. <laughs> That that even gave you more, you know, more more drive, more gusto, to to really yes. continue. Yeah. Now, what was the experience like, participating in that first global challenge? I mean, <laughs> you know, you must have had a lot of different feelings yeah. and. And, and so on. Here it is saying, "Is your first time participating?" Mm -hmm. Let me hear your experience. As I, I, um, unfortunately, you guys weren't there. <laughs> but um, I think we okay. When we went to Washington D.C. and we walked into the Constitutional Hall and we saw members from more than 200 countries, that blew our, our mind instantly. That's the first thing. Um, I remember walking in, talking to the members. And you know you're walking, talking, not realizing that no one is beside you saying anything. Um, just to realize that they were so stunned that they didn't want to step into the hall because too many people was actually there. Mm -hmm. um, but what actually captivated us is that we were there competing. Our robot was very small. It wasn't as large as the others, other robots. And that was a strategy that we came up with. And we find ourselves doing all the tasks, quickly moving on, um, hanging, or hanging the robot, because the robot has to, had to hang itself, so it has to hold on and save itself. In the event of a storm, the robot should secure itself. Um, so, you know, we were doing that, and one of the team members from, I, think, I believe he was from Russia, said to us, are you guys from St. Kitts? They said, yes, we're from St. Kitts. And he said, look up, and when you look on the, on the display board, we were, we were second in the world at that point, right? And so everybody was like, whoa, <laughs> right? And then we were 16, and we find that we were up in that number. Were you and shocked? We were shocked because we were saying that this is our first time. We have countries like um, uh, you know, Guyana, they have an established robotics um, you know, program running. We have other countries, you know, we had Russia, China, we have, you know, all of these nations have the established robotics institute, right? Here we are coming from St. Kitts and Nevis just started working on robots and we are and we are 16th in the world so everybody's wondering what is St. Kitts and Nevis where are you guys from some people didn't even know mm -hmm. where on the map we are located but they were interested to find out who we are and so a lot of people begin to flock us to find out um, where are we from yes. you know you know who, who's teaching you guys engineering down in St. Kitts and Nevis do you have an engineering school there and so a lot of questions begin to um, come out of that. And I think that is where we recognize that um, there's a lot of potential that is here. And sometimes um, it takes a situation where you take the participants outside and show them and say, this is who you are. And that is what sinks the whole idea that I can outperform. You know, you're, you're not better than me. Um, I still have the same ability as you or even more. Right? And so we were able to prove that in, in 2017. Coming right. back home was actually um, a wonderful experience. Um, we got a lot of applause. I must say the, the Governor General, he, he hosted us it, it instantly. He didn't even ask any questions. So you guys have to come up. This is big so recognition. It was, <laughs> yes, so, so he was instantly, because now we were on the world stage. We weren't competing in the OCS. We weren't competing in the region. We were competing internationally. And so we were able to perform um, so well. So for us, um, coming out of that, um, we had to step the next step, make the next step. We had to move to another level to make sure that not only two or three or four or six or even eight 
um, young people in St. Kitts and Nevis ex are exposed to it, but we expose the entire island, right? Because we have gems in these high schools, we have gems in the, in the secondary schools, and they have skills, they have um, ideas, they are creative, they are innovative, and sometimes they are just there. Mm -hmm. and just want somebody to bring that um, idea out. And that is why we have a project working on, which is the um, SKNNRC, the Senkis Nevis National Robotics um, Challenge, where we are hoping to, to create a challenge where we have Senkis and Nevis high schools participating. And just like, similar to how we have the, um, the inter-high, we have the same kind of energy and so forth. So we felt that we had to come back and do something that is meaningful to, every, to all the high schools and even to the other institutions in St. Kitts and Nevis. Is there such a thing as robot abuse? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> when you say robot abuse, you're, can, can, you're giving, can humans yeah. <laughs> Can humans actually abuse robots? Uh, <laughs> um, you're attaching a feeling to a robot, and that's a controversial um, um, conversation. <laughs> Because now we're attaching feelings, and mm -hmm. that is what the scientists, most of them are trying to achieve, a robot taking on feelings. Yeah, and uh, right. Or, let me put it this way. <laughs> can, can robots um, keep humans from abusing other robots? Um, that can be hap th yeah, that, that can happen. Um, we are, we're not there yet, <laughs> but um, that can happen. Because mm -hmm. they, for, for us, it is us um, logics. For us, it's logic ones and a zero, um, a code, a language. You tell the thing what to do and it behave accordingly, all right? And you code that code in and then it carry out the action. So you can basically code a robot to do whatever you want it to do. And that is why you see in factories, they see these arms moving up items and objects because there's a code that is telling the robot that every 60 seconds you move, every 10 seconds you move this way, and after an hour you should stop. Right? So um, you have all of that, and all of that is based on what we call an algorithm. And that algorithm uh -huh. is what um, forms the structure of the language that actually allows the robot to behave how you want it to behave. So you can tell the robot whatever you want it to do. Okay. So whenever we code our robot to um, go to Dubai, we use sensors. We put sensors on the robot. So if we do not want the robot to crash in anything, we put a sensor at a certain point, and that sensor, whenever the robot goes close to an object, it stops. It doesn't go further, it just stops. Mm -hmm. So even if you're pushing it forward, it's not going to move. It shuts off right, right there. So whatever you tell it to do, yes, it will do. Okay. Um, yeah, but we will not encourage um, it taking over the world. <laughs> right, because they, they basically don't have feelings. <laughs> They have no yeah, feelings, no they're not, that's, that's, what, that's the, the big yeah. difference between robots and human beings. Mm. It's based on logics, and that's a, that's a big difference, logic. It's based on logic. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes and no, true and false. Go but it's human there. beings who Q. have to program the right. robot. The robots, yes. <laughs> and I suppose we human beings can also be programmed. But not yes, programmed but that, like robots. No, no. <laughs> I guess if you find yourself begin to program like robots, you're a part of a cult. Yeah, so we can't be programmed like robots. No, we can't be programmed like robots. Um, but, uh, but that is how the, the, the basic construct of a robot, how a robot behaves, um, is based on an algorithm. An algorithm, for those who are listening and watching, um, is a step by step process in solving a problem. Mm -hmm. A step by step process. You have stages. Um, in allowing a robot to do what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now the whole robotic revolution, mm -hmm. how is it really changing the way that we live, Sanjay? Mm -hmm. Well, robots doesn't necessarily have to be mechanical objects that move around. It could also be like simple, everyday use utensils, I mean, uh, items that we use, for example, like you have the home bot called Alexa. And we use Alexa for multiple things. I myself use Alexa to turn on my lights, the kitchen. <laughs> it's simple things. It kind of makes it easier for you. So I could be sitting in my desk work, doing some work, and then I can be like, Alexa, just turn off the lights, or turn on the music. So, uh, or we have Roomba that just cleans the floor. And some, some things just make it easier. Robots just make life easier. So I don't really... So, so that's Alexa <laughs> and, of course, you have Alexa and what you have, this other one, and, and iPhone, Siri. Yeah. 
Now, the, they are using actually robot technology? Yes, we have what is called AI, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. And they're all based on an algorithm again. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm is written for, the, for that particular um, voice to respond to whatever you say. So whenever you say something, it searches its, its um, database for the appropriate response based on what you say. And that is why it can respond to you. You know, you know, one day I was mm -hmm. driving and so on, and I mean, I wasn't really using my phone. And then the thing came on, Siri came on and said, yes, how can I help you? <laughs> and I'm like, start wondering, Siri is listening to my conversations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I yeah. really have a concern. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be that you use a keyword at some point in time yeah. and it picks up yeah. that keyword and then it begins to respond based on its on, on the database. That but I had not yeah. been speaking to Siri, Siri it just and I was you. not asking Siri anything, but Siri intrudes and Siri, how can I help you? Yes, yeah, so that, that might be a glitch. <laughs> yeah, or maybe you use some word that's similar to Siri, because sometimes when I say serial, Siri comes on. If I say, like, I'm watching this show, which is also called series, it comes on. Mm -hmm. So certain words uh, that are similar to Siri or even uh, e Alexa is also called Echo. Mm -hmm. So if I'm talking uh, to my friends and I'm saying Echo or something similar to that word, uh, economics, uh, Alexa is going to turn on. So every mm -hmm. device has a wake word, and the wake word can be similar and still they're going to respond. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think robotics so. basically is improving the way that we live yes. and is making life better for us as human beings. Yes. Um, and we can look at examples across the world. Um, Are there any, yes. you know, so we, mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can speak Sp about yeah. so much mm -hmm. uh, or so many benefits mm -hmm. of robotic technology. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the disadvantages of robotic technology, are there any? Uh, oh, yes, there are, there are robotics, um, there are disadvantages. You mentioned one earlier that you have, for example, if you have a factory that Putting has people out probably 18 employees, <laughs> you're going to have a, a reduction of the employee within, within, within that space. What, what we champion um, from our introductory start in this area is for that disadvantage to not um, manifest itself too much. So we focus on a lot of retraining, fitting persons in different areas, um, even um, retraining to even code, um, these things. Um, you're never too old to learn. <laughs> so, so that's the one. So right now, if you Google any kind of technology disadvantage, you're gonna find a wealth of um, disadvantage. Um, and some, we, some we, we can control, some we can't control, but retraining would be one of the main ways in act, uh, eliminating most of the disadvantage that mm -hmm. comes with, with, with technology. It's extremely important. Yes. And the example that you used, of course, of the Governor General. Mm -hmm. And to see that mm -hmm. even at his stage of life, mm -hmm. yeah. He's that you said he's one of your <laughs> biggest oh, yes. fans. Yeah. Of course, you know, seeing this mm -hmm. as something of the future mm -hmm. and being able to even look at your past, mm -hmm. but yet realizing that times have changed mm -hmm. and that we are moving in mm -hmm. a different direction a new direction, mm -hmm. and to be able to accept that, mm -hmm. even though you probably won't be a part of it, mm -hmm. we are a part of it now, no. because mm -hmm. it has a, the revolution has mm -hmm. already started. Mm -hmm. But some people, of course, mm -hmm. sometimes they get stuck. Mm -hmm. And people will tell you, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want no cell phone. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to see a computer. You know, they think that these things are perhaps from the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And they're not willing <laughs> yeah. to accept mm -hmm. 
the changes mm -hmm. that would have taken place mm -hmm. over time. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have to accept. We have to. And we have mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. and recognize the good mm -hmm. that the technology and the engineering and the science and the math and the gifts that people mm -hmm. have and are putting them to use yeah. for the development mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah. You see, you there, know? Yeah, there's a, there's a, what I, what I recognize about what COVID would have done, COVID would have put us in a position where technology must be embraced. And that's just the beginning and the end of it. Um, so even when I want to fight it, it's just a reality. And, you know, times have changed. And, times have changed. And that's just the reality. Times have changed. And so we have to look, how can we leverage this change? Right. You know, how can we uh, make sure that this change become a part of us? Right. Now, mm -hmm. Dr. Neil, we have yes. to go to the phone lines for yes. mm -hmm. the time that we have left, another 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The numbers <coughs> to call are 466-2666, 466 Seven six seven four seven six five. The international number one two three nine six four five forty five hundred. That's one two three nine six four five forty five hundred. We welcome your calls. Great. Mm -hmm. So we continue the conversation, Doctor. Right. Mm -hmm. Neil, I interrupted you there, too. Yes, so um, COVID would have shown us that we would have to make a change. We find that the, even the high schools you know, would have to be moving online. Um, you know, most of the operation that we would do you know, face to face, now we you know, move them online. So the embrace, you know, we're, we are forced to embrace, and um, it shouldn't be a matter of force, but <laughs> it happens. It happens. Um, I was talking to a colleague of mine, and I said, well, he's one person who doesn't like to use cell phones. He said, I don't want any cell phone. You know, he's okay with his phone at home. And he said, I saw him the other day, and he said, well, I need to get a phone now. So I said, well, that, that, that's how it is. You know? So change is here, and the change is for the better. And um, we would have been functioning in that area for a few years now. And so this is the time where we show our hand, you know, if, if you will. Um, to say this is what we are about, this is what we are doing, and this is it. Um, what, there's one thing though we, we, we actually, and we are embracing, is the, the wealth of young people who are interested in what we are doing. And we have been getting calls from parents, we're getting calls from young you know, youth leadership, you know, here and in St. Kitts, you know, wanting to be a part of what we are doing. I want to understand what is this new move, you know, um, how can I benefit from it? And so, um, we are actually embracing that kind of um, in inquiry. Right. Mm -hmm. On one hand, I think you, you can say in terms of robotics, you have space exploration, mm -hmm. where we, you yeah. know, you're sending things for, yes. you know, and so on to planets and so yes. on, and, and actually mm -hmm. they have been programmed and monitored mm -hmm. from Earth. Yes. And on the other That's, hand, mm -hmm. you have the... So while that can be, you know, in terms of exploration mm -hmm. and, 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 and no out there, mm -hmm. getting information in term, there in terms of science and so on, we, are, we also can see where that sort of technology as well can be used to one's detriment mm -hmm. in terms of weapons of mass, mass destruction. destruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As well, mm -hmm. where you can stay yeah. here, um, in, in, you something. can stay in North Korea, mm -hmm and program things to come and blow up um, ZIZ. <laughs> yeah. you know. It is some that sort it, of it a programming is, that... Yeah, it's, it, it boils back down to programming. It, to the, the science. Yeah, science. It boils down to science. Um, for, every, for every good deed, someone will change it into a bad deed. <laughs> and so um, someone will try to modify it. And that is where legislation comes in. Okay, so let's hear us talk about right? the legislation. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. We do what kind? Well, let's put it this way. I know mm -hmm. that recently the <coughs> the parliament mm -hmm. passed some anti 
nuclear mm -hmm. right. weapon mm -hmm. um, bill, which basically seeks to, mm -hmm. you know, um, to say, well, look, we, we do not support mm -hmm. weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. We are a responsible member of the international community and so on. But you were speaking mm. about legislation. So, so, so that is something that um, is very, very important. Um, and legislation is um, assists in, well, it's legislation is that police that says no, right? And that is very important um, to manage and put that in check. Um, so while coding um, is beneficial to a number of persons, um, you know, we find that even in, and I use um, some of the Asian countries, they do have robots that help in the healthcare industry to take care of um, our elders and so forth. You know, you have persons on the other side who feel that they need to do some damage. So we have to make it clear here that this is the benchmark, all right? Now, the association fully endorses um, any legislation that speaks to weapons of mass, mass destruction. And, and uh, we have to. And the fact that that legislation came up, it means that we're thinking forward again, which is good. So we're thinking three, four, five steps down the, um, the road, right? And so you have us as the association is also coming up and embracing such legislation. So legislation is what will keep that kind of um, situation under con control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so down the line, mm -hmm. We have to think in terms of... You have of to think legislation and looking on you know, um, specifics with, um, um, within the legal framework. What kind of code is required? What is not required? Mm -hmm. And I think that is one thing that is mentioned within our um, association um, introduction that we also will be looking on you know, legislations that speaks to and then form it as a proposal to, to the government to say that these are some of the other areas also that you have to look at. Um, because some of these areas are also there as um, exploits, so we want to make sure we cap those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as an association, you mm -hmm. formed an association. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of a networking do you have in terms of mm -hmm. other, Shaquille, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the region? Um, you said we are one of the first associations, of mm -hmm. course, within the OECS. Mm -hmm. Are we the only association within the wider Caribbean? We yes. are as well. Based on our yes. last check, so, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. So it means then that we can reach out and assist mm -hmm. other islands in terms yeah. of... And realize then, okay, this, this will become more of a partnership. Mm -hmm. And then in this event, we now have to think bigger. So then mm -hmm. the next step would be to create a, a governing body that would monitor these associations and any other associations mm -hmm. within the Caribbean mm -hmm. that decide to come on board. Mm -hmm. So we, we are looking to reach out, uh, if anyone wants to reach out to us, mm -hmm. in, to gain assistance. Because mm -hmm. even though we, we are new, we have an idea of what we're doing, and we're still mm -hmm. getting assistance from mm -hmm. our legal team. And, we are willing to support. Mm -hmm. Right, because we, you know, we are talking about um, regional integration, Yeah. Mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. and of course, we are talking about linkages, mm -hmm. of course, and mm -hmm. it means then that we, we do not only market ourselves mm -hmm. domestically, mm -hmm. right. but the association mm -hmm. should market itself right. both regionally mm -hmm and internationally as well. Mm -hmm. And in that way, you not only help others, but you also grow. You yeah, grow, yeah. As an association. Mm -hmm. And that is what um, Shakid is actually mentioning, because based on the communications that we would have gotten from the OECS, um, we feel that we need to um, begin to s look at it from a regional perspective to see if we can form a governing body to govern robotics associations mm -hmm. and also to set up robotics associations. And within these associations, you have STEM as a main driving force to make sure that young people um, are comfortable with engineering and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, you, do you have anything that I did not touch mm -hmm. that you want to mention? Um, well, we, you did touch it in terms of um, yeah, robots yeah. being um, used in different work areas. Um, but from what I can remember, um, one of our earliest um, robotics prototypes 
was to incorporate robots in the national security level. So we had developed a concept. We made a prototype as well. It would have been, we call it a recon bot. Uh, this would have been sent out um, where we don't feel comfortable sending our own humans. And within this robot, we, we planted a mini drone that would then go further than the drone, I mean, than the robot. So it, it would have been more of surveillance and monitoring and assist where needed. And most of the, drone, the robots and drones that we were constructing at that point would have been more of altering to go out further and do more research. So that is something we're still getting into and looking at doing as well. Sanjay? Yeah. Um, well, mostly I would just say that the robotics team, well, we just have a lot of challenges going on. And hopefully you can... Challenges that in competitions. Yeah, mm -hmm. challenges within the competition itself. <laughs> so because this year's an online competition, we have 40 unique challenges, mm -hmm. three challenges per week. It's 13 weeks. And we are halfway through, seven weeks in. We have a um, couple more weeks. Mm -hmm. So by the end of this, we're just hoping to have the best time of our lives because school starts soon. So it's going to be... <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah. studying, back to studying. Mm -hmm. So before that, we want to just have fun now. Mm -hmm. so, may, so for those who are going to be joining the association as well, just know that when you learn, just have fun. That's mm -hmm. the main key. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Neil will talk about that because he always tells me, have fun. Yes, <laughs> you should have fun. Um, learning should be about fun. One of the reasons why um, um, Netherlands and some of these countries um, perform extremely well is because learning becomes fun so it's fun and then you are you do not see it as um, a Not task sure. yeah you, you see it as more of having fun um, I oftentimes say to them that if you see your job as um, well if you see your career as a job where you get up every morning and you say ah work again you know you might not put out enough effort but if you see it as something that you're excited about and uh, because you're changing lives and you're, 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 you're impacting the, the public, then um, you will see it as something that you can evolve in. Thus, Robotics Association, <laughs> you know, uh, we generally tend to love what we do, and that is why we are actually um, at, at this stage. Mm -hmm. But I want to also kind of mention that the robotics team, the Sinky Sanis robotics team for 2020, um, it, they contain 30 members, the largest team that we've ever had. Um, last year was like nine or eight, mm -hmm. and now we have yes, up to 30. And the team is made up of students right across St. Kitts and Nevis. So we have students within the high schools um, who are actually involved now. Now, now in terms of the membership mm -hmm. of the association. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the membership, you can apply online. Um, it's yeah, how an, big on is an application. it? The membership is 70 plus, about 74. You have 70 plus. Yes. So you have mm -hmm. a chairperson. Yeah, oh yes, so we have an executive body. We have a board. So the board is made up of about four persons or five persons. Um, the executive is about eight persons. Mm -hmm. And then the body we made up of the other 60 plus mm -hmm. persons. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. well, we are out of time and okay. I am excited mm -hmm. about this whole area <laughs> of robotics. Yes. I wish I could build one to do certain things, <laughs> you know. And I do want to mm -hmm. congratulate mm -hmm. you on the formation of this um, association, the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association, and for being, you know, the leaders mm -hmm. in, this, in this field in the OECS and in the Caribbean, being the first. And others, of course, I'm sure, would want to emulate you mm -hmm. and your example. And of course, for the history making, you know, because it's history, in the, you know, made, and for your participation in these global challenges and so on. Albeit you can't participate this year because we know what is happening um, with the COVID-19 pandemic. But nonetheless... Well, they're actually participating, you know. You participate they're, virtually. They're currently, yeah, yeah they participate now virtually. You're participating virtually. now yeah. virtually. virtually. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, your, mm -hmm. your work and your participation, your efforts and your creativity, mm -hmm. of course, is being recognized mm -hmm. 
on the international stage, mm -hmm. and that is a great thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so I congratulate you on that, and of course, invite young people with an interest mm -hmm. to join the association. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, as something good, and St. Kitts is on the move in terms of science and technology and engineering mm -hmm. and the arts as well. We can't leave that yes. out, and maths. And it is one of the ways, of course, in which we can see benefits coming to us, technological benefits in terms of our industries and, and all of that here in St. Kitts and Nevis. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Shakid. Sanjay and Dr. Neil, who is the chairman and founder of the St. Kitts and Nevis Robotics Association. I want to thank all of you who joined us today for today's program, Working For You, with a very exciting, a very interesting topic, that of robotics technology and of course, how it is changing how we live and how it is changing the world, more so for the better. I am Les Roy Williams and next week we will be back with another edition of Working For You. Until then, take care, follow all the safety and security protocols that have been put in place to protect you from the COVID-19 pandemic. See you next week.